let's do another video here and uh, let's learn a couple more skills. Uh, the first thing that I want to show you guys here is we're going to create a hockey puck. It's hockey season, it's November, things are getting rock and rolling with the blues. Um, so let's make a hockey puck and then I want to put holes into that hockey puck. Why? I don't know. But in the previous activities, in the previous curriculums, it, it, the thing that we did this in looked like a hockey puck. So I just figured, what the heck, we'll just make a hockey puck and we'll kind of put some holes in this and see what's going on. So let's put a sketch onto uh, that plane there. Let me, I'm gonna redo that. I don't like how that worked. So I like to right, I'm, I'm gonna left click, right click. I'm gonna do new sketch and I'm gonna go to front here. From here, there's multiple ways that you can make uh, your circle extruded and all that good stuff, which is fine. Uh, that's probably the route that I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a circle. Your diameter of your typical hockey puck is three inches. Uh, so we'll dimension that out. Three inches and we can finish that sketch. I'm gonna go to an isometric view. We are going to extrude it out. You can go this way. I like to work backwards for some reason. It's just my brain works better that way. And we're gonna go one inch. A hockey puck is three inches in diameter. It is one inch thick. Yes, I did look that up. Um, but it also does not have a sharp edge here like this would create here on this cylindrical type thing here. So I'm gonna put in um, a fillet. I'm gonna round that off just a smidge, and I'm gonna round the other side off as well, just for funsies. I don't know why I hit stop recording there, but I did. Anyways, uh, so you can kind of see there, I got my, my edges kind of looking pretty good there. Um, I might go ahead and change that to more like a 0.1. Might look a little bit more realistic there. Yeah, so now I got a hockey puck, awesome. So, let's go around. Uh, let's go to the, I'm trying to find the front view here. There we go, there's a front view, okay? So we're gonna use, in this, we're gonna use circular pattern, we're gonna use point, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to go ahead and use the holes function, which is right here, the holes tool, all right? So up first, what I need to do is I need to create a sketch. So I'm right clicking, I'm hitting new sketch. I need to use or project the geometry of this shape onto my new sketch. Okay, so imagine a new sketch. So let's say that we have this hockey puck here and then we put a piece of paper over top of it. When we do that, we need to bring the geometry of the puck onto the new sketch. So that's what I'm doing whenever I project geometry. I think I explained that in a previous video, but it, sometimes it just works best for me to just go ahead and explain again. So from here, what I'm gonna do is on the Y axis, I'm gonna put a point. So I select the point tool, I'm on the Y axis and I place a point. I'm then going to dimension that and we'll just make it at one inch, okay? Anytime you put a point, or you're gonna put a hole into a shape or onto a shape or maybe even extrude something out from it, you have to put in dimensions of where it's going to be at. That way the computer or the, the software knows what you're trying to do. Otherwise it might throw you up some errors, okay? So I've got my point, okay? From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to go ahead and use what's called a circular, circular pattern. So to find that again, it's in this one here. This is our linear pattern. I'm gonna select the down, uh, drop down arrow there. C select circular. I'm gonna select what it is I'm looking to repeat. I'm going to repeat it, it'll let me here. Double click there four times. Make sure it does what I want to do here. Yep, it's gonna rotate around this way four times. You saw how I clicked on where it now says 4x, and I'm gonna hit the check mark. Okay, 
Okay. So now what it's done for me is it's done one, two, three, four points in a circular pattern. Could I have placed those uh, each time, et cetera, et cetera? Yes, absolutely. But what if I wanted to make that even more? So let's say that I wanted that to be eight, or not 87. But if I wanted it to be eight, well, I can change that to eight. Now I have eight points, and I have diff eight different points evenly spaced that I can place those particular holes that we're getting ready to, to do. Okay, so I'm going to go back in and I am going to put that back to four because I'm only going to mess this time with four different types of holes. Okay, so there we are. All right. So what we're going to do is at first we are going to just simply put in a through hole. Okay, so the hole is going to go all the way through the puck. So I'm going to select the hole feature. I'm going to select that particular point. Now I'm doing a simple through hole, I'm going to do just your typical clearance hole right now, and I'm going to set it to 0.25. I'm going to hit the check mark. Now I have a hole going all the way through my shape. Okay. So notice the hole locators or the points have now disappeared because they've been consumed by the first hole. So what I'm gonna do is over here in my browser bar, I'm going to select this here so it'll show my sketch two, which has all of my other points on it, okay? This is also known as sharing the sketch inside of Onshape. In other programs, you have to physically share this by clicking on other things. So now it brings back my points and I'm able to use those points to do other types of holes. So I'm gonna select this hole here. I'm gonna select the whole feature and I'm gonna do what's called a counter bore type hole. Counter bore, okay. And then from when we do a counter bore, uh, clearance hole is fine, ANSI is fine. We have different options here to look at. So the actual width of the hole for this, we're gonna set it to 0.375. The part where a counter bore is really, think about a, mm, a hex nut going into this and it being placed in there. Um, I can probably come up with some pictures a little bit later for that. But anyway, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a spot for that steel nut or that hex nut or maybe even a screw to sit inside of and it's gonna be underneath the surface is probably the best way to explain that, underneath the surface of the puck, okay? So with that, we're going to put that at 0.75. See how that made that real wide right there? Okay, there's my 0.75. Okay, there's my 0.375. And now for depth, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in 0.25. And let's hit the button. Okay. It came all the way through. This hole isn't as wide as it is on this side. And that's because that's a counter board. This part here, where the highlighted circle is, that's called a counter board, okay? So up next, we are going to just simply go ahead and put in what's called a countersink hole, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing, same process. Select the hole tool, okay? Select where we want that to go. We are still in counter bore. We're gonna change it to countersink. Okay, a countersink would be something that you would see probably in like some furniture, uh, wooden type furniture where the screw, uh, the screw head is perfectly or maybe just slightly under the surface of a wooden piece of furniture. Okay, there's other applications for that, of course, but uh, this is, it's the best way for me to uh, explain that for you. Okay, so for the countersink, Okay, the countersink, 
I am going to make that be 0.75 as well. And notice it got real wide right there. All right. The actual hole itself, I'm going to leave it at 0.375. And I'm going to just go ahead and use 82 degrees just because it's already there. Okay. So what would happen then is if we were screwing a hole into this, or there was a particular type of screw we were going to use to go through the hockey puck, it would sit pretty much perfectly level with the surface, okay? The counter bore, it sits inside of it just a little bit more, okay? So the only other hole type that I'm gonna mess with is we will do just a simple, we can do a through hole, you could use what's called a blind hole as well, where it doesn't go all the way through the surface. Uh, maybe we'll just do that one, and we'll make that one be point. Uh, I like it rather wide here. Um, and we'll just go ahead and put that guy in right there. I'm sorry, that's what I meant to hit that first. Simple, blind, there it is. You can see on the other side, it did not go all the way through. That's called a blind hole, okay? and we can hit the check mark and we, now we have that there, okay? So that is how you mess with the holes function. You'll use this as we work our way through things, especially when we get into creating VEX parts for our projects moving forward.